Yeah, welcome everybody um, to this interesting talk. My name is Timo. Uh, I'm Android native developer and also web developer for with um, React. And today I'm going to talk about a library called uh, Recompose. And basically, I will go through three subtopics um, in this presentation. The first one will be about the um, concept of higher order components and then I'm going to show you in some practical examples um, how they are basically built with presentational component container components and then recompose and yeah let's get a little bit more serious um, so higher order components uh, which of you already have heard of higher order components or used them so about 40 percent okay um, which of you have seen the movie Judge Dredd Okay, 10%. <laughs> yeah, so basically higher order components are components that, um, yeah, that are, f or higher order components are functions that take components and in return you get more or less an enhanced component. And um, this could either look like this, that you, you know, like pretty simple, like you pass a component, you get back with uh, an enhanced component. It could also look like this, you have one or two arguments and the component and then you get back the enhanced component. Or it could like look like this, that you curry um, your properties or props uh, further. So you say you have like uh, two arguments and you curry them on with the lambda operator uh, defined here to a function that is returned that also has a property which is the component and then you get back the uh, more or less the uh, operation which is the enhanced component. Um, which brings me to a uh, side topic in this presentation. I would just uh, shortly mention it that um, yeah, this exists in functional concepts, uh, curry and partial application. So um, basically a partial application is that, um, I'll just show you with the example that you, um, for example, if we would have like an add function, uh, which yeah, adds two props. Um, and you would uh, partial this um, function. You would uh, you could only pass like one um, parameter, but if you only pass one, then you get back the uh, ad, uh, an add function that still has uh, one uh, parameter left, right? So, um, and currying uh, is basically you have um, a function with n arguments. And uh, what you want to do in curring is that you want to turn this into n functions with uh, one argument. And um, in JavaScript, um, before ES6, this could have looked like this, that you have your function, you pass your first property, then you get your return function inside the, that function that also has a property, and then you get from this function, you get a return operation, which is the comparison between those uh, Value so value bigger limit, and in ES6 with curring, um, of course, since we only ca uh, can pass one um, property, this would have looked like this: that you say you pass the limit and the value, and then you and finally get back the operation itself. Um, which brings me also to uh, two examples of um, something to show you, basically, like everyone has used Redux probably, or most of us here in the room. Uh, and you have a connect function. And this connect function takes two functions. Um, one is the map state to props, and one is the map dispatch to props function. And then you carry it on um, to the component, and then you get back the enhanced component. And this is basically this, right? And uh, there's another library called relay. Um, if you want to do like GraphQL uh, requests, um, you have like a create container function that takes a component, in this case it's named to do, and the second argument is a, um, basically you want to map your requested data to an object called uh, to do. And uh, this is exactly this one, right? And if you think back about functional concepts, um, functional composition is nothing else than what higher order components tell us. Um, we combine simple functions and in return build more complicated ones, right? So, but um, yeah, what is the purpose of this all, right? So, um, uh, in 
the practical examples I will show you. Um, uh, first, I show you like the presentational component itself or presentational layer. And my understanding of that is that um, you basically uh, declare uh, a stateless functional component which just renders your JSX syntax and um, has maybe some properties, in this case an SHA hash and a message, right? And uh, then if we go on and create our uh, container React component, um, this is basically what adds the functionality around this um, um, uh, stateless functional component itself. So uh, we can declare a state. We have our uh, lifecycle component did mount function. And um, um, if we got all the data, we render it in our uh, stateless functional um, component. But we can abstract this a little bit further. We can say, OK, we wrap this whole thing into a function called fetch commit and make this a little bit more dynamic. So we pass basically, um, uh, we could pass dif uh, a different component named wrap component and then render this, but with the same functionality, of course. And then we can abstract this further. We can say, OK, we uh, change the name of this function and call it a fetch resource and uh, we pass the fetch function with a different path probably and carry it on to a return function with the wrap component and then basically the, uh, we get back the container component uh, in the end. In this case I still have uh, fetch like the commits data. I mean this is all just theoretically here on this on the slides. And but we could change it, right? We could uh, change the path of the fetch function, say, OK, we want all GitHub uh, owners in a specific range, and then we render that in our owner component. And that brings me to two further uh, small topics. Um, one is the props proxy uh, pattern, where we basically can say uh, we have our wrapper function or higher order component now where um, before we render anything, we create a new object um, that uh, has, um, yeah, that, that is named user, and we pass it onto our wrap component. So this is basically props manipulation then. And um, then another thing is inheritance inversion, which is kind of an anti pattern. Maybe I shouldn't have showed it in the slides, but uh, who cares in this case? Uh, and we have our wrapper function where we, uh, instead of extend our React component, we extend the component we pass and uh, render the parents render function. Um, uh, how could we use that? Um, maybe for authentication login, where we say, OK, we, if the user is logged in, then we want to render the render function of the, <coughs> of the wrap component. And if it's not logged in, then we show nothing or we render some, uh, something else. And uh, yeah, that's basically render high checking. There's also another thing where you can say, OK, um, if you render the uh, parents render function, then before that you can uh, stringify a props and state. And this is basically state manipulation. Uh, so in context or uh, in conclusion, what can we do with higher order components? We can do a lot of code reuse. We can do logic and presentational layer uh, <coughs> abstractions. Uh, we can do props manipulation and state abstraction, which is um, with the props proxy pattern, and random high check and state manipulation, which is uh, shown with the inheritance inversion. And this is the last topic before we go to recompose. Um, basically. Uh, what we want to do now is, uh, if we have like a stateless functional component, we want to uh, wrap that in functionality, right? So we have our first uh, higher order component or wrapper function that wraps functionality about our base component, and then our second and third. Um, but in this case, it looks pretty shitty, right? And you could do this also with ES7 decorators, w which would be like with add annotations and um, then define your base component or stateless function component. Uh, but in this case, it would look much better if we would have a function that um, composes everything of that, right? So um, we have like our first HRC and the second and the third. Um, in this case, I did it in reverse because most compose functions, uh, I think, uh, take the f um, function on the far most right and then it goes uh, until to the left, right? Um, yeah, this is how a compose function could look like. Um, <laughs> you can look at it later when, if you're interested on the slides. And yeah, Arnold is still not happy, but at least he's a little bit more interested. And uh, what is recompose? Recompose is a utility belt um, 
for function components and higher order components, at least that's what Andrew Clark defines. And what I see is uh, wrapper functions, right? So we could declare for uh, a state for a stateless function component or uh, handler functions, or we could re-render something if a property had changed, or um, if more one or more properties change, we could do something if we props on change, or if you want to add a lifecycle functionality, then we could add that too, and many, many more. And um, I'm going to show you three more examples um, before a live code demo. Um, first is the with state. So how do we define it actually in recompose? So um, if you look at the with state function, you see that the first uh, argument is basically the name of your state. The second is the setter function. And um, the third it defines actually what your state will be like. I, it will it be a number? Will it be uh, an empty string? Will it be a Boolean object array or whatever? And uh, when you look down beneath, I compose this with counter state function, which is my state uh, wrapper function, right? So now I can use that in my stateless function component as normal property, uh, the state and the setter uh, function, and uh, count up or uh, count down um, my uh, counter component. Um, but I could abstract this, of course, a little bit more further um, if I don't want to. Um, Redeclare all these set of functions again and again. I could write f handler functions, uh, which define a count up or a count down, right? So this looks a little bit more more easy to read. I would say instead of just defining like the whole thing in your set of functions, right? And then another thing uh, should update. As I said, um, if some property would change. For example, in this case, a property called comments max and a property that is something else. If those change, then it will return true and your stateless function component would re render. Um, and if it's false, then yeah, would not. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's a long animation. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> well, to get back, what are the pros and the cons? The pros are um, you have, of course, uh, decouple functional and presentational layers. Uh, you could have faster development. Um, you could improve uh, refactoring if you know how to, um, you know, if you have a good structure in your project. Um, and of course, uh, what for me at least was the most uh, better experience um, for Recompose is that it's more readable. Um, and the contrast, of course, uh, expenses to change if the abstraction is wrong. Um, it could be complex to newcomers. Um, and it can be complex in computation because if you have, like, a stage uh, functional component and you just um, have, like, 10 wrapper functions at the end, then a whole lot of objects will be created, right? And that brings me to the code demo. So if we start that thing and reload this page, you can see we have like, um, well what this ba uh, application basically does is that um, I get my GitHub owner and I want to search through my repositories. And if I type in, for example, the React Recompose example uh, and press enter, uh, it loads all the, all the, f uh, the last five commits of this repository and uh, shows the SHA uh, key uh, and the um, message to it, right? Or some something else. I did some error handling too, which is uh, pretty simple. If so if I would type anything that it would return nothing because this repository doesn't exist, just to show you that, that, I that it really works. And another uh, repository. So, yeah, it, it requests the uh, repository data from, um, from GitHub, right? So, and if we look inside of the code, this project is built up with Webpack 2, um, ES6 code, and of course, Recompose. And <coughs> if we look into the uh, first index.js, uh, you can see I'm using Apollo client to fetch the data and defining um, where I have to grab my data. And then I have uh, so I created a root component which um, defines with React router, um, of course, where uh, which routes I call and where. And I have two main components. One is the search component you saw when I was searching some stuff, and the commits component which shows actually the list 
of the grab data. And if I look into the structure and go into the search component, um, you can see I defined like uh, the compose function of recompose, the with state, and the with handlers uh, function. And I define uh, like a, a state for my <coughs> component, and I also can give it like another name. Uh, you can also write this with state, for example, inside the compose uh, function itself. But uh, you know, if you define everything down there, it look a little bit messy. I just like this approach better. Uh, so everything's functional. Everything's nice and clean. And uh, then we define a handler function um, where I actually take uh, every input of uh, my input uh, field and um, pass the value of that input field into my uh, repo state. And yeah, of course, uh, the second one is just the uh, when I press the enter key. Or uh, yeah, I also can click the name down below <coughs> if, I'm if I don't want that. So it looks pretty nice. And if we do that, then uh, what happens? It gets into the uh, commits component um, where I have my query for the um, GraphQL request, um, where, you find my where, uh, where it takes my owner, my repo. It goes to GitHub, um, to the repository that's defined of the owner and the repo, and takes the uh, maximum of five commits and the SHA and message. And then, of course, with the query itself, I grab the data and want to map it onto um, um <coughs> uh, <coughs> props. And of course, if I, I don't want to wait too long for uh, the data to, uh, to be grabbed and see nothing, so I show a with loading function. And yeah, of course, if something goes wrong, I just return a repository that does not, not, does not exist. And uh, in the end, as you see, um, even though these are not um, recompose functions, I still can compose all other functionality in it, right? So this is pretty pretty nice. And in the end, I just um, uh, wrote a render commits function that uh, maps through the com uh, grab commits data, and I render uh, a stateless functional component uh, without anything in it except the render stuff. Yeah, so um, we'll go back to this nice presentation. Um, what happens? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, if you if you want to grab that um, repository to try out things, uh, you can. You or you feel free to do so. Um, if you're interested in setting up Webpack 1, um, you can read my article from last year. <laughs> I still didn't update it from <laughs> for the Webpack 2 configuration. But I will uh, eventually put it on Medium somewhere uh, when I'm ready. Um, take everything um, except my soul. Uh, thanks for listening. And yeah. <laughs>
fun. So fun. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not necessary to use like lifecycle functionality all the time, right? So um, just keep it as clean as possible, I would say. And I mean, sometimes it makes sense to just create a normal React component, I guess, instead of uh, just compose everything and then have like uh, the creation of a lot of objects inside your compose function. So yeah. Probably not all the time. I can answer it directly. <laughs> it depends on the use case. Can I use your compose uh, either or the components instead of functions? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, please. Yeah, but those wrapper functions are basically the higher or high order components you set up, right? So, wh or what do you mean exactly? Maybe I didn't understand it. Are you sure that you have functions, just not components, functions, and you have uh, functions chained one after the other? Yeah, yeah. It's can you do the same with the component functions? With, with classes, you mean, or yeah? Uh, yeah. If you can do that with uh, state uh, function, just function. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can discuss this later yeah. after the presentation. Uh, I'm not sure how to answer it now. Yeah. 